hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber it's good to have you here thank you for coming back and if you're new here welcome welcome to the family my name is Tola and I am a content creator based in Vancouver Canada so before we go ahead with today's video I just want to thank you guys for the love that I got from my previous video the likes the comments the shares like even the questions like I'm happy you guys loved the video based on the comments i got i decided to do my how i relocated to canada from nigeria and just answer some questions concerning school application visa application and all that good stuff <music> Before we start i'm also going to put a disclaimer and just say that i do not work at ircc i'm just going to be talking about what worked for me what i did to relocate like as you watch this video i'd also say that you do your own personal research just to be sure and yeah that's just it do your personal research ask questions and i guess watch videos like this that might be helpful to you because i would also say that i watched videos and I also did my own personal research and that was what helped me. So yeah, let's get right into the video. If you see me looking down, just so that I have a notebook and funny enough, I have what I call my Canada books. So this was basically where I put like everything concerning like my travels, like documents I needed to get, things I needed to do at a particular time. Like I just wanted like all the information i was like getting from different places to be in like a book so like i wouldn't get overwhelmed so first things first you have to find a school um i started my oh, i started applying to schools um 20 this is 2023 2021 <laughs> you guys like i don't know why i was i was about to say 2022 but i was like yeah that doesn't make sense well, actually it does like i got admission 2022 but i started applying 2021 november and i would say before you apply just make sure you have your transcripts with you especially for students that studied in nigeria i know for my friends that were like applying to schools they had to make sure they like they they had sent um, emails to their professors or like to people from their schools who could like assist them in informing their schools to send like their transcripts for me i was a bit lucky maybe because i schooled abroad i already had my transcript and then sending an email to my school to like forward my transcript to the schools i was applying to the schools i applied to was not like that difficult so yeah have your transcripts with you application fee a lot of schools in canada require that you pay um an application fee which ranges from like 90 dollars to 110 and like i said before it depends on the school that you pick some schools ask for 90 dollars some schools 100 some schools 130 but just say your mind that the range starts from like 90 dollars ielts as well ielts i didn't write ielts like i was very intentional about not wanting to write that so i made sure to pick schools that did not require ielts yeah some schools might also write ask that you write a statement of intent maybe why that school why that program in that school and some schools might not so all of this to be honest it just depends on the schools you're applying to so for me in 2021 november i applied to three schools and i didn't get in so i applied for um public administration yes that was the course and i didn't get into those three schools and i believe i don't know but to be honest i think that was why i didn't get in was because there was just no connection with the documents i submitted and like the course i was speaking i only had a background in law i only worked at a law firm i did law in my undergrad yet i was applying to a course that i didn't even have work experience in so after hearing back from the schools i applied to and i realized i didn't get in so I, like i was just thinking about so i was just trying to think about like what went wrong like why didn't i get in so if i'm applying again i won't make the same mistake and then i came across skype console through my sister and on instagram i messaged them it's like a consultancy agency they help students who want to travel abroad the us the uk canada australia i think and some other countries and it's free they don't collect money all you just have to do is send them documents that you would send to your school the type of schools you want maybe fee range how long you want your program to be if it's under um, if it's a master's a diploma 
and like they'll just ask you some questions so they would know like the type of schools they can send to you as well if you're interested be assigned a personal agent who would really like help you with your application you're able to like speak to the person so that was what i did and then i ended up applying to two or three schools again and then I got the school that I'm currently at. So um, that's Felin Dickinson University. So with Felin Dickinson, I didn't write IELTS. It was just my transcript, my passport. They also sent me like questions. So rather than me writing a statement of a statement of intent, they actually sent me questions like um, what motivates and inspires you? Why have you chosen this graduate course? And um what is your greatest achievement and stuff like that so i guess maybe that was their own version of like a statement of intent or their own way of um i guess gauging my english writing skills i don't know but i did that and yeah within a month i believe i got um, a letter of offer from them if i remember any other um, documents again i'll just put it on the screen and the funny thing is the course i applied for at falindikisi university administrative science is quite different from law but then i got in all the law firms and even companies where i've been like a legal assistant i've had administrative duties which i think helped me so the course i applied to and like my resume had like um, I guess co uh, like a bit of connection to it not even a bit it had connection because I had like equal amounts of legal and administrative duties on my resume so I guess that helped me all in all what I would say is with school application you can actually do it yourself for me I was actually in a hurry to leave because I had given myself a timeline I started applying to schools in November of 2021 and I wanted to leave September 2022 so when I already got back from my schools by February and I'd not gotten in I was very like agitated because and like if you know me you know I'm a planner I've already planned my life I'm like this is where I want this is where... so I just felt like me not getting into those schools at that period had like scattered my plan so I was just in a hurry to like get into any school but if not I'd have actually just taken my time to just like readjust my resume you know apply to courses that relate to because i didn't want to do llm so i would have just taken my time to do more research which is what i would like encourage everyone else to do and if you also want to use an agent you can as well like it's just up to you but i just feel like doing it yourself gives you more options like but then i wasn't willing to wait so that was my problem i wasn't willing to wait till like till whenever i just wanted to leave september like last year even though i ended up leaving january of this year so okay. yeah so before i round up the school application aspect just make sure that the schools that you're applying to are also eligible for post graduate work permit so there are some schools in canada that are not eligible for post graduate work permits or there are some schools that are eligible for post graduate work permits but then the, some courses are not eligible for postgraduate work permit. So basically, this just means that there are some schools where if you attend like the university and you take a particular course, when you're done with school, you have the opportunity to apply for po <laughs> you have the opportunity to apply for post study work permit if you decide to stay back or if you want to stay back in Canada. But there are some schools that are not on that like the designated um, institution the designated learning institutions whereby when you're done with school that says you can't apply for um post study work permits and so it's up to you so just make sure you do your research and you and be sure that your school is under the designated learning institutions and i'm just going to put the link in the description box so that's the link that's like where you go on it it's, it's you're able to like Put the province the university and then it would let you know whether the school is like eligible for post study work permits or not so now visa application so with visa application I'm actually going to be looking at my book a lot because a lot of things like I, I read everything I literally wrote everything there because I did my visa application myself and if you know me I'm very very thorough I don't want to I don't like excuses I don't want to care I wish I I wish I let me just be serious and do it once and for all because i know me too i can be lazy but then if you really want something you have to really like put in the work to be honest so before i even like go into it i just want to tell you because i'm going to be looking down a lot because i i don't remember some of these things but everything is in the book and i would say even after you watch my video please 
go to the official website of the government of canada go to the official website of the government of canada i'll put the link in my description box as well everything i repeat everything i'm saying and more is on their website from your study permits checklist to like literally everything you want to do before you apply for visa the what to do where like after you submit your application like the, everything is there on their website as much as i spent a lot of hours on youtube watching so many videos i'll just always like write it down somewhere i won't even put it in my canada book i'll just write it down somewhere then i'll check the website again on can like the, the canadian website the government of canada's website to be sure that whatever i've even watched online is going with what i've what is on their website so i'm i'll not lead myself astray like just make sure you go to the website of the government of canada deposit so a lot of schools in canada they would request they would require you to pay a deposit before they give you a letter of acceptance sometimes the deposit could just be like 2500 in my case it was 2500 usd dollars because my school is an american school so we our school fees is in usd for some people they might re request that you pay your first semester fees or maybe one year like so it just depends on the school so these are just the informations that you have to even like do your research on so you know like okay share like can i do this <laughs> oh after i got my um, offer in may i had two months nigerian banks nigerian wala i was able to pay within the stipulated um deadline that was given so i i started my visa waka because i always say that like because i still didn't apply until all my documents were complete so i didn't even create an account because see me i'm just i don't know Sha, maybe i'm just different but i didn't even want to create an account and then start and then stop halfway i wanted to get all of my documents first before just now creating an account and then submitting i wanted to just do all of that in one day create an account submit my documents end it they pay and just know that okay i'm in the waiting period from june from like end of june to when i actually applied for visa which was august 5th so i get so i literally had like let's say two months to gather all my documents which i'll be talking about very soon just to be sure that i could just gather at least 80 to 90 percent of what was on the study permits checklist like i went to the canadian website i wrote the like the documents down i watched so many videos i put some extra documents just to be sure that like you know everything is everything is sharp complete because it's not like an interview that you can like defend yourself you have to just send documents that you know that would not even even if they they are like they have questions in their heads like you would have supporting documents that would even back up whatever documents you're submitting <laughs> so i had two checklists so i had the applicants personal information and then i had applicants proof of fund so that was how i did my own so i'll be starting with the table of content for applicants information so the first thing is your statement of purpose so one of the documents you need to submit for your study permit is your statement of purpose and i feel like statement of purpose is basically you just rather than you have like a one-on-one -on -one interview with somebody it's you literally just writing everything you want whoever is looking at your application to know about you so you don't want them like any questions that you even think the person might have you've answered it you should have answered it in your statement of purpose basically my statement of purpose was six pages i made sure to to just put everything and also go straight to the point the second document after applicant statement of purpose was my birth certificate as well and then my work uh, my transcript and my certificate i also did foundation before um university so i added my transcript as well my certificate so if you did a levels if you did like your work anything shall just put your academic background just put everything there let them know okay you've gone to this school you you have the evidence as well and yeah my call to bar certificate as well you've done nyc put my nyc there um applicant's resume so i put my resume as well then police um clearance certificate so that's one of the documents on the study permit checklist they want to know that whether or not you have a criminal record or you don't have a criminal record they shall want to no, based off of the police certificate that you give so the annoying thing for me was 
one my sister because my sister applied for a visa before me and i think she she put in an application in june or may so around that time police etiquette in nigeria was still ten thousand naira oh yeah only for me to come and do my own they say it has increased to forty thousand naira only god knows how much it is now so the next document is a medical certificate so you have to do medicals as well so with the visa application i know that there are some people that do their medicals after they submit you can do it after and can do it before for me i wanted to do it before because i already heard of cases whereby when you submit your documents like when you when you hear back from i guess the when you hear back from the canadian government that you should submit you should bring your medicals that's usually that's usually a good sign because that means like after you submit your medicals you're good to go they'll tell you your passport is approved but the problem with that is always when you when they now tell you to bring your medicals you also don't want to waste time and then because obviously you're not also sure whether they will tell you to bring like bring your medicals or not you wouldn't want to now book but then when they now tell you to bring it you already know that everybody is trying to jack at the same time so even looking for a date for medicals is tough so i was just thinking about it that i don't want a situation where i would now submit my application and then they will tell me to bring my medic my like do my medicals and bring it and then it's taking me two months just to get a date ah and i was like no 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 like so i just decided to do that beforehand and as i would do as as i expected it was even a struggle to even look for a date because then i'd given myself a deadline that i should i should apply for visa end of july like around end of july shall before august and i even ended up applying august 5th and that was even because looking for a date was even a hassle and i wanted q life because the two hospitals you can use for um for your medicals for canada is q life in vi i believe and iom in ikeja i couldn't even get a date at q life and i didn't want to waste them so i ended up going to ikeja which didn't turn out to be bad like i was done before 2 p.m i believe and i was there like as early as 8 or so or 9 yeah and you get there as expected there's a long queue everybody is trying to do their medicals and where iom is in ikeja there's also the people that are trying to go to the UK or go to America or go to Australia. Everybody is there for like so there are like different queues for different countries. So it's just I would advise that you do your medicals before you submit your application. But if you also want to do it after, it's fine. It's the same thing. So far as it, so far as you get it done, Sha, that's the cocoa. And medicals for me was forty six five hundred. So it was forty six thousand five hundred. Then the next one is applicant's employment reference letter. So I got a reference letter from my office just stating that because I already so I already said that I'm currently working here in my resume. So I also wanted to just back it up that just in case they might just even have I don't know, they might just have some questions or whatever. I just wanted to get a reference letter from where I worked and I wanted to attach it to my documents for them to also know that okay, yes, I put it there, I work I currently work here. And then there's a reference letter to also back it up that I'm an associate here and these are the duties that I do. So the duties that I also put or my responsibilities or the things I put on my resume, I also made sure to put it in my reference letter which was signed by the HR. So yeah. And then yeah, applicant stamped passport pages. So I don't know how true this is but I heard that like it usually helps if you traveled out of the country before if you're applying for study permits um with canada so i tried to just i just scanned um like the stamped pages on my passport and i attached that as well and then your regular passport picture for canada i went to take passport pictures somewhere Sha, so that was probably less than 5k so yeah so that was it for my table of contents for applicants information my statement of purpose which is very key please just make sure you take your time in writing it make sure all of the information that you think would be helpful in your application should be there so with the second table of content i did that's um, for financial records so i named it table of contents for financial record so the first one is letter of sponsorship so for me i was saying that my dad was sponsoring me so the letter of sponsorship is just stating that okay i'm the biological father of so so so, so and this is what i do this is what i earn or these are my properties or this is what i have and i can categorically say that i can you know finance her through her studies it's not going to be a hassle i'm sure if you check online i think i, I don't really know if i remember the youtube video i watched but there are so many templates of like letter of sponsorship so you can check online 
and then just try and tailor it to fit whatever you want to write and yeah and then affidavit of sponsorship as well of course i'm a lawyer so i did that for my dad it was just for him to sign it but it's basically like the letter of sponsorship as well him just stating his name and then saying he's, the, he's my biological father and you know him declaring his assets and saying that he can categorically take care of my studies and yeah signed it as well so the third on the list his birth certificate as well his data page and then um, my dad's bank statement and then a reference letter from the bank as well just even stating that okay this person has had an account with us for so so, so years he's an active member blah blah blah, blah. If i had my way i would even put my dad's letter of employment as well but they obviously my dad just he didn't think it was necessary and luckily it didn't it didn't affect me but i know usually for whoever is like sponsoring you they always want like a lot of documents for them to just know that okay this person is working this person has this maybe this person has this amount of money that can finance your studies and it wouldn't still affect his own um daily life i'm so sorry my camera went off i don't remember what i was saying but before i forget something just came to my head now because i just kept talking about sponsors if you're also sponsoring yourself just make sure that you put enough like information and evidence you know your um pay slip from work if you have properties you can put that as well maybe like you have like land that maybe your father gave to you or anything just make sure you just give them enough yeah i also added like my my pension account statement so if you're working in nigeria i know a lot of companies in nigeria they help like associates or um employees with like creating a pension account so if you can add that as well which says that okay i've been working at least for this long and this is how much i have in my pension i'll put all of the documents i've just mentioned now on the screen as well so that was it for financial record and applicants information you can also check the canadian site as well to look at their study permits it would be nice if you can get at least 85 to 90 percent of those documents because the more documents you have it just really shows that like okay like this person is serious and any questions that they might even have i'm pretty sure one of the documents that you've added that you would be attaching to your application would answer it so that's so like i said it took me like less than two months i would say to gather all of these documents you know police certificate doing my medicals um gathering some documents um even writing because statement of purpose as well i just wanted it to be as information field <laughs> as possible and yeah so i just gathered all of my documents and as i was doing that as well i was creating my table of content and like taking it off arranging it because even uploading the documents you have to like compress it to like a ridiculous amount of easy mb or so so i had to even go to a cyber cafe to do that like create the table of contents attach it because yeah it was just a lot sharp but just make sure you get all of the documents that's on the study permit checklist on the canadian site i applied so august 5th i created my accounts on the canadian site i registered filled all of the personal information it took me like an hour an hour 30 minutes there's a part where you attach your letter of acceptance you know your offer letter everything i uploaded that one there's a part where you ask for like um like um, proof of funds so this table of contents for financial record is where i attached so i attached everything as like one document like a pdf when you submit your documents then you pay for a visa and then you pay for your biometrics so it's, it comes together they would ask you if you've done biometrics before if you have then you can like exempt yourself but since i have ones i paid for everything together which was 235 usd i would confirm and then put the price on the screen based on the fact that my friends had applied and the videos had watched i was already expecting the email from um from them telling me to book my appointment for biometrics so i did that i booked my biometrics for the 9th of august and i made sure to pick the earliest date like because <laughs> i already had about the fact that there are long queues and whatever so i just picked the earliest date so that i know i'll just get there do whatever i'm doing and then leave for like biometrics they'll tell you the documents to bring as well after you book your appointments I know i took my i think my data page my passport data page mm. they will tell you to bring there's a letter they would send to you after you've created an account and booked your appointment for biometrics they'll tell you to print it and bring it so i applied august 9th one and it's time for the wait <laughs> and i've had a lot you know and that period so my sister was also still waiting for her passport my friend was still waiting for her passport and they applied like in june 
so this is august so i already just thought okay you know so everybody's saying three months four months five months six months but then okay by that time i didn't even accept my faith that i can't even leave um september and i was going to leave january so but i still wanted my visa to come out on time so that i will now start my post visa preparation <laughs> and thank god my visa actually came out in six weeks so i applied august 5th did my biometrics august 9th and my visa came out september 17th and yeah that was it but just so, also make sure you put in all the documents that you believe would help your application so you're not even like second guessing yourself during that waiting period because i knew that submitted all of the documents required like of me i wasn't actually scared i just thought that okay because of the stories i've heard with canada it just takes time when they get back to you you have to go to dhl to submit your passport the letter that was given to you at like the day on that was given to you on the day of your biometrics um on the day of your biometrics and like some other documents i'll actually put it <laughs> on the screen as well because i can't remember right now and then you submit your documents and i think with lagos maybe a week or two you get it and yeah that's it your passport is stamped by the time you get it back post visa now so i went ahead with ethiopian airline and altogether my flight ticket was six hundred and fifty eight thousand naira so from lagos to addis ababa and then from addis ababa to toronto and then i used air canada from toronto to vancouver that's all i have to say for my my journey my relocation i really hope even if this video is long to be honest i hope it's even helpful and if you still have more questions just put it down in the comment section and i will try and answer them as best as i can why did you guys also realize that i don't work at ircc so i might not have some answers to some of your questions now i'm just going to answer some of the questions i got in the comment section in my previous video how early can an international student come to canada can they do so if they have all the documents required by ircc but school has not yet specifically started issuing confirmation of enrollment um so i believe the moment you get your visa and you buy your tickets you can come to canada the only thing is because you haven't started school, you cannot start work until classes start. So just have that at the back of your mind. Because like I have friends that like school started January, but a lot of them came December. You just know that you can't work until school starts because you're not yet a student. So yeah, I think you can come the moment um, you get your visa because you're we'll legally allowed into the country. So the next question, someone asked me to share my experience flying with Ethiopian Airlines and I'll say honestly it was okay. Like altogether the experience was nice, food is crap but then again I don't like plain food, I'm a picky eater, I don't like a lot of things so you might actually like the food. Mm. But then I had like a tummy ache and I got painkillers so that was really nice and yeah. It was an okay flight. It got me to my destination. I wasn't really expecting much. I just really I wanted to move from A to B. Should I take me to Canada? That's it. So, so someone asked me about um, home ties. That how was I able to prove home ties? So in my statement of purpose, my last paragraph was about career goals and home ties. So I said that after the completion of my education in Canada, I intend to come back to Nigeria and thrive as a practice manager at the law firm or even an administrative specialist or a, or a human resources coordinator at an organization you know depends on where i'm at when i'm doing my um, education in my resume i talked about how i also um like how i did like or i was currently doing then administrative um duties at my law firm so it just made sense that i said i now want to be a human resources coordinator so as you can see like there's that connection in my resume while working as an associate at, as a law firm, I was also doing some administrative duties and now I want to do administrative science. And I'm also saying that when I'm done with school, just, and I also talked about how, well, for me, I studied in the UK. I did my foundation and my undergrad in the UK. And luckily, because I didn't really like the UK, I used to always go to Nigeria during summer. So I literally went home, I went back to Nigeria every year. So I was just like, based on the fact that they can see the stamped, um passports that i attach to my documents you can see that i always like i always like i came home basically i moved back i moved like i always moved back to english you can see they could basically see that i always like 
left like the UK to go to Nigeria for summer. So I talked about how my family like were very close and then I also talked about the fact like the fact that even when I was done with school I left like months before my visa even expired and also I was able to just show that like I don't plan on staying here more than like the dates that they've given me on my visa. Did I resume September? No. So I resumed January. My school has um September intake, January intake and I'm not sure. I think it's just September. Oh yeah, September intake, January intake and spring which is um May. So September, January, May. Did you get a yellow fever card from Nigeria and did Nigerian immigration ask about it? No, I did not get a yellow fever card. I had my vaccination card with me, but they didn't even ask me about it at the airport. But then they asked some some of my friends, so just have it with you and make sure you're fully vaccinated. I had my card just in case they asked me for it, but I know they asked me, I don't know if they asked me in Toronto, but I just had it with me just in case. And that, that's actually one of the documents you upload on Arrive Can. So yeah, just make sure you're fully vaccinated and you fill the Arrive Can. <coughs> 72 hours before your flight. I really really hope this video is helpful to you and I hope I was able to answer your questions concerning school application, visa application, flight. I feel like accommodation is like another another like <laughs> different video. It's like because it's a lot like looking for accommodation, looking for like the right um location and stuff is just a lot like if you guys are interested like if i get a lot of people asking me about that in my comments section i would definitely do a video on that but yeah so i hope i was able to really answer your questions concerning visa application and school application and let me know if this video was helpful to you please if you haven't like subscribe comment down below let me know your thoughts share this video with your friends and your loved ones make sure you also put on your notification bell so you know when i upload a video and yes that's all from me i hope you guys enjoyed this video and yeah see you in the next one bye guys